So Monty's Desert Rats. Uh, once again, just as the uh, the Rubbles, uh, Rubble box set goes, this is a nice, nice sturdy package, nicely presented, though emphasising the 17 pounders as your gut option. Uh, maybe if that's what you want on your list, yes, but I think the 25 pounder is much more class, uh, classic option. And there's a reverse, just telling you what's in the box. Um, nice presentation, I put a bit of effort into that, and it's a nice sturdy box. So, what have you got in the box? So once again you need to be careful when you're opening this. Uh, lots of the components are loose. Uh, for instance here, the 25 pounder, 17 pounder crew, and you'll notice that that's uh, bent. It's the same on the other one. Extremely bent on the other one. No doubt it can get fixed. Maybe a little bit of uh, heat, carefully applied hot water or such like will deal with it. Um, and these guys are quite, quite well sculpted, well cast, certainly going to be a lot of detail you can pick out in there regardless of whatever you, you paint, uh, but they're soft. You see that guy moving around there, so just be careful how you're handling them when they are painted and in place. Um, get your decals, a couple of sheets, that should be enough for what you need. You get tank commanders and two bases for your guns. Then you get your card so you can go fully fledged version 4, the full the full version 4 basically that is starting in mid war in the desert. Now here are the the gun sprues. 17 pounder option, 25 pounder option, uh, very nice once again just like the German guns, you've got different shells and uh, expended cartridges that can be helpful for adding some character, as well as uh, the choice of closed or open limber doors. So really quite nice, nice looking, uh, nice looking gun. With some nice detail on the gun shield as well. So looking forward to painting them. And then for the tanks, got the two different types, you've got Crusaders and you've got Grants. So the Crusader, you've got the two turret options, different gun options, you can see three guns for three different types, a little bit of storage that's always handy, tarps are always good, help break up the shape of the tank, there's some little oil cans, and you've also got the option there of the, uh, the MG turret, if that can be seen. Uh, quite nice, to be honest, I like the look of them, I like the feel of the plastic. Once again, the tracks are well uh, sculpted in the main. These, these ones are a bit different in as much as they're sculpted more on the bottom and than on the top, because the top will be hidden by these scuts. Be nice to paint something that isn't a Sherman. So we've got three of them and five of the Lees. Now this is one of my favourite tanks. There's no reason for that other than the fact that it just looks wrong in just about every way. There's just far too many things in it. It's like a Penelope pit stop, wacky races type tank. But I like it and it's fairly effective in the game. You can see you've got various gun options, you've got the short and the long 75, you've got your 37mm, you've got different uh, turret options, or a couple of turret. You've got two different turret bases as well, for the two different types. That's the Lee, sorry, the, the Grant, that's the Lee. I think that's right, that's the Grant, that's the Lee. Um, British turret being bigger so they can get more crew in. And you've got some nice storage as well. You've got you've got the bins that um, are placed on the tank as part of the production process but there's a also a uh, nice long tarp, oil cans, a wee jerry can. So these are looking quite interesting. I've recently painted 
a lot of these in lend lease colours for my Soviets so I can do something once again that isn't just green so I'm looking forward to that uh, and also so don't forget you also get your rule book this is your fully fledged version 4 mid-war desert rule book it's got everything you need to play and that's a big difference obviously from old rule book worth pointing it out a lot less daunting maybe it's a bit less character but I'm happy to sacrifice a bit of character for a bit of simplicity so there you go I shall come back once these are assembled and uh, give any feedback on that process anything that you might have to watch out for uh, any pitfalls or any opportunities um, to make things easier so that's the assembly of the Monty's Desert Rats box completed I didn't need anything um, except standard modelling tools and standard glue so let's have a look at some of the individual models so I've got the Crusader here and this was the easiest um, tank of all the, the two box sets the hull's really simple the front and the rear it's all one piece so the top just slips on top you have this insert but it's in itself it's, it's the position of it doesn't move anything else if you see what I mean just need to put it in and make sure it's straight and then you're ready to put the running gear on nice and simple um, fender sort of dust panels on the side and uh, that's that's the basic construction done there is this little uh, oil, um, fuel drum in the back it doesn't have any mounting points so just be careful when you're mounting it hold it in place for long enough the uh, the sprues get cut off on the side of the hull along these storage bins so just be careful when you're taking them off and uh, cutting down any excess because there are there's a chance of some detail being affected it's the same with the turret its joint is along here along the edge so it's possible to uh, cut away a bit more than you want so just be careful and make sure you get a nice solid join all the way along and then choose the right gun for the turret type that you've got uh, and you know that's about it really for the Crusader it's a nice straightforward kit same cannot be said for the Grant it's got a lot of challenges first of all the top, the bottom, the front and the back is four separate pieces you might be tempted to make the bottom and then try and put the top on but if you try to put the top on and this is sealed in place and the rear panel sealed in place you might find there's some gaps gaps are almost inevitable with these kind of kits because they are simple productions but you, you're going to have to put these four pieces together at the same time to avoid really big gaps you want to be putting the front and the back onto the bottom and then straight away the top glued and pushing towards the front and then the back pushing up whilst you're holding everything in place back pushing up to the rear of the uh, the top that will avoid a gap here and here you may find that you're pushing away from the bottom the bottom a little bit in places but the running gear will hide that and then to complicate powers you've got these dust shields I've found that the best way of putting these on to give you the, the, the best opportunity to get your fingers into where they need to be is putting them on before the running gear so make sure you've got plenty of glue enough so you've got a seal all the way along especially here you don't want a, a, a gap visible there you want that nice and sealed so put it on set it up so it's almost almost glued and almost dried even and then push your tracks in they will clip in quite nice and push the fenders out if they're in a little bit too far but uh, trying to put this fender on while the tracks were in place you know you might have to push the track down a little bit to get the fender in and then it's trying to get your finger in to push that fender up if there's a gap it's much easier to work with the, the running gear off 
Then you have to watch your bins. There are two types of bins, storage bins. There, uh, there's this type here, which has got a slope from back to front. And it's a type uh, which also does have, it has no slope. So it's the bottom is parallel with the top. So don't use the parallel one, use this one. You then, um, you, you then see that the top of it is parallel with the top of the tank. Whereas if you want to take the one with the, the bottom and the top being parallel with its, in itself, the top of the bin will point up the way. The gun itself has to be mounted in a particular way. It's towards the top of the sponson, but there is a different sized spigots inside to make sure that you get the uh, correct orientation. Now for the turret, you've got to remember to choose the right uh, 37mm. Uh, that, by the way, make sure you choose a shorter barrel. But there's two barrels of the 37mm that look very, very similar. Check your instructions. You'll see it's the one that doesn't have the sort of recoil mechanism underneath. And then be careful with the joint. On the turret, it goes in a very visible way through the high point of this curve. So make sure it's a good seal and that you carefully rub down any remaining bits of sprue. So overall, it's quite a challenge. Uh, you've just got to be careful. Take your time with the first one and the other ones should be fairly straightforward after that. Now for the uh, the gun, I decided to go for a 17 pounder. <coughs> 17 pounder. The reason being that you can you can expand on your 17 pounders uh, because the sold in boxes are two, like expansion sets. 25 pounders are sold in boxes of four. So you'd end up with six 25 pounders, which is no use. So I thought I'd go for the 17 pounder. It makes more sense in that respect. The um, the gun also is on parity with the 88 in terms of um, the, the two separate box sets. But very simple. You've got two wheels, stick on the side, gun stuck in on the mounts, shield on top of that, and a little bit fiddly, but no problem at all. The uh, the sight, and then the limber. It's a very simple construction, it's just basically a box. Choose open or closed doors. Stick the, um, the toe hook onto it and the wheels onto it and that's you done. So I've added some storage. There's quite a nice storage in there. I like a, a kit that comes with tarpaulins so I don't have to make any myself. These tarpaulins are from the Lee Sprue but I put them on the, the, the Grant. Um, just likewise here I've got the Lee Sprue but then the Grant Sprue just uh, to change things up. And then a uh, different size there and moving, moving the pieces of storage around so that um, you, you can make things look as individual as possible. And there's occasional jerry can and oil cans um, just for a bit of character. I, I did not put the wheels, uh, spare wheels on these guys that came with the kits because it's just very big, you know, it's like a, going to be like a big uh, radar dish on the tank. So I left them off. But there you go, there's the, the Monty's Desert Rats painted, uh, painted, constructed and ready for painting. And I'll be moving on to painting in part two of the video. I'm going to be painting these with Vallejo colours and I've been giving some thought to the painting schemes. So when you see them again, they'll be airbrushed and ready for finishing.